Okay, so how to find uh, this page? Typically, how I do it, uh, I write Daniel Chatenier homeless page. <coughs> that is, uh, so, or you have a link, uh, there is a link uh, in the GitHub, uh, or Maud, or Daniel Chatenier homeless page uh, work uh, better. And then, uh, so you get uh, this page here, And then uh, you just uh, click on Combine Analysis Formation. Is where we have all this file. You see there is a publicity flash uh, made by Daniel, some sub, uh, subliminal <laughs> publicity. Now what we will need, uh, we need uh, to download uh, two of them. So the first is the APS uh, synchrotron image uh, here, so with the LAB6. So this will be the LAB6 experiment, so with the standard LAB6 that we use to calibrate the instrument. When you work uh, with images, especially if you work with stresses, you want to calibrate uh, your detector. Means calibrating the detector means uh, we want to calibrate the distance between the sample and the detector and the tilting and position of the detector, okay? So, especially the tilting is important because the position we can always work out later, okay? But uh, the, the tilting of the detector, because even if they put that, this is in transmission, so it's supposed to be perpendicular to the beam, but it's never uh, sufficient, so it's never with the precision we need for diffraction. Okay, diffraction, we need uh, uh, some angle that you never reach mechanically, okay? So we need to calibrate uh, using a standard. So typically, also when you go to a facility, you measure a standard first, uh, especially if something was uh, moved, okay? So this one, I have already downloaded. Uh, you download uh, the APS synchrotron image, okay? And the second one we need after, Okay, so is the MGFEO, so you scroll uh, a bit down, MGFEO in, uh, in the duck, okay? Mm -hmm. So in the diamond anvil cell. That is, uh, so is the same instrument, same uh, after the, uh, the standard, they then they put the cell and they measure, okay? So the LAB6 also, you have to in take into account uh, is a can. Okay, or is a capillary with the LAB6 inside. Okay, so this is synchronous radiation. So typically, is a capillary. After they put, uh, we put uh, the duck, and now there is a difference between the two. In the first one, uh, typically the beam is larger than the sample. Okay, so also the center of diffraction depend on where uh, the capillary was put inside the beam. <coughs> the second instead, uh, the sample is larger than the beam, so that one will always be in the beam. So the two will actually have uh, the, let's say the centering of diffraction may be different, okay? And in fact, uh, we will still refine the centering of the diffraction also when we do the duck, okay? That is something you have to keep in mind. So the tilting will remain the same if they don't move the detector, okay? But the centering, if uh, one was uh, with a sample inside the beam and the other the beam inside the sample, it could be different. And it is always different, okay? So that is uh, why we will need uh, to refine the centering, okay, of the diffraction also uh, with the with the high pressure experiment. Okay, so if you have a download, let's see now. Uh, that is all uh, we need uh, because we have all the fun inside. Okay, for, uh, uh, I have a bit, uh, <coughs> okay, so no, not this one. Tutorial, MGFEO, okay? So, uh, we need uh, this file here, 
LAB6 uh, 25KF003 TIF is a TIF 16. I converted from the MAR into 16 bit uh, uh, grayscale. Okay, when you convert images, remember you don't want color images, you want grayscale images and uh, 16, uh, well, it depends on the detector, so in this case, 16 bit is okay. Okay, uh, and I have a short guide just to, so I made less mistake and to remember some of the quantity, okay? I can put uh, this short guide, you don't get from the downloader because it's for, uh, if you don't know how to work uh, with the program, it's not uh, it's of no use, but uh, okay. So what we did, do first, while well, we start the program, okay? So you start MAUD, and when you start MAUD, you just get, uh, uh, well, or you get your last analysis you, you did, okay? Or uh, a new one, uh, empty one. So let's uh, say if uh, you have uh, another one, just so you press uh, here, new analysis, so we start uh, scratch. There is uh, here a data set defined in which we load the data and we define the instrument. So first, then we will load uh, our phases, so the LAB6, okay? And then we work uh, out. So let's start uh, with the data. Okay, because here we have to define also the instrument. So remember, this is synchrotron in transmission with the uh, MAR detector is the circular uh, one image there. Okay, so I select uh, my data set. Oh, one advice. If uh, I typically, in MAUD, I enable, I want to see this window here that uh, give me some extra messages and also error when MAUD, uh, uh, so to enable that one, you go to interface and is this one console visible, okay? That is the console, so you get a, so, and if you get some error and you don't know what is happening, also, uh, if you send this error, all the list uh, to me, is easy to find out where uh, what is happening. Some of the error, you can just uh, leave, uh, if. If it doesn't compromise your analysis, you just uh, ignore them. Okay, so let's see. Um, so I use uh, the high button here. It's just, uh, okay, I want to look inside the data set. So I press that one. And uh, so I go here. So first I start to define my instrument here. Okay, so I edit. Uh, so what we need here, okay, <coughs> let's start. Uh, first, uh, I, well, I give a name to the instrument because I will save it uh, into a one, data, one database I have, uh, and you also have uh, one of these, uh, mm -hmm. if you have MAUD. So because then I can always import this instrument so I don't need to re redefine, etc. So I call it, uh, this is uh, ALS, so it's Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, but it's the adva advanced light source. And the bin line was the 12.2.2, okay? So I call, so I remember this one. I put an underscore because I have already another one in. I want uh, the one I'm defining now. <coughs> okay, uh, the intensity, actually, I know already it is better to change, uh, this is the overall intensity, a bit less, otherwise our peak will be initially too high, okay? Mm -hmm. I, uh, or uh, you change later, but uh, let's uh, gain some time and do it. Uh, now. So now, I don't need any intensity calibration because I, I will get uh, from my image. Uh, uh, so some instrument, they need some intensity calibration. If you are working with time of fly, here is where you need to define the incident intensity function typically, okay? So this kind of. Here in our case, uh, no intensity calibration, but we need angular calibration. What means angular calibration here is a general term. Typically is to transform from one type of coordinate to another for, uh, in our case, we have images. For the images, we have pixel, right? We have to transform into two theta 
pattern. Okay, so that is uh, we select uh, what model we use uh, to go from the image coordinate to the two theta. Okay, so in our case, uh, and I when you work with images, there are some of them are obsolete, like flat image transmission. Now is replaced by inclined, and actually, yeah, Rudy Venke told me. I have to remove a reflection. So it will be called inclined image. This work with any image in the space, whatever it is, okay? Uh, and uh, it can work out. Uh, it doesn't matter if it is even out of the, of the typical diffraction plane, okay? So any flat image, okay? So this work for flat uh, inclined means uh, in our case, it will be just at zero, everything, okay? So I select that one, okay? Can we use transition, for example? The flat image transition can be used, okay? That one is more simple. He has only a tilting x, y, okay? But I prefer this one that, uh, in yeah. fact, in the other, there will be, there is a warning saying is obsolete, better to use the other. Okay. So to use this one. It's more general, and also there is a benefit we will see that when you do a first integration, all the other, if you uh, use the same uh, setup, et cetera, and you want to do the same caking, et cetera, you just drag and drop uh, the images and it will work. Okay, so it's much quicker or uh, also more practical, but it has also, uh, it, it works a bit better, okay? So, but still uh, the other can be used, okay? So it's, okay. it's not. So the flat image only work uh, for uh, in transmission, so like uh, our case now, okay? And so the only correction is a tilting and the centering, okay? Uh, and uh, so it's uh, more simple. The, uh, this other one is said, so in work uh, with uh, any image inside. So including the, the this one, but uh, uh, with this one, uh, I put in some additional method to make it uh, quicker to, if you have a series of 100 images, you don't want to, we, we have an instrument that collect uh, two, 300 images, okay, moving the detector and uh, yeah, so we just drag and drop the image over, over there. There is a trick, if the image, uh, so if you are collecting different images, Tilting the sample, omega, chi, and phi, you have to put, uh, there is a, in case you can ask, but uh, we use uh, to put the uh, underscore O for omega and then the value of the angle. Underscore C for key and the angle in the name of the image. And that, uh, so Maud recognizing, we set uh, also the angle there, okay? Otherwise, if we work with only one, no problem. Okay, so now under option here, we have to set up, uh, so the detector distance is nearly, so it's about 350, but the, we don't know exactly. We have to calibrate uh, with the LAB6, okay? So let's put, uh, so typically, you have uh, three information that uh, work here. One is the set parameter of your standard. The other is the distance, and the third one, okay, is the wavelength. You need to know two of them and refine the third one. If you only know one of them, is you are a bit on the trouble because uh, the other two can get a different value and still uh, match, okay? So typically, okay, for the distance and the wavelength at the beam line, the beam scientists typically know the wavelength and uh, you calibrate the distance, okay? But uh, you use a standard because uh, at least uh, the cell parameter of uh, what you are using should be well known, okay? Okay, so let's see, this is about 350, okay? And uh, well, I can put already, the detector in this case is at uh, zero, okay? Two theta, not uh, the default, uh, but it doesn't matter. And also zero tilting, now, what are uh, this one? This is the detector to theta. So if you have uh, your, uh, okay, here, sample, and the source is here, zero will be this one, 
And then the convention in Mauda, if you are looking from this side, two theta increase at this way, okay? That would be negative two theta, okay? Or you go over 180, okay? Uh, and then, uh, okay, what is, uh, well, center Y and center X is actually, and the error is actually, what is the normal? Because if your detector is like this one, so the normal from the sample to the detector goes here, and so your X will be here, okay? So, so there is a, but uh, in our case, will be near the center, okay? The zero. Okay, so the zero X, and X is in this direction, and Y is in. Uh, yeah, uh, actually Y goes uh, down in the image. We are using image A. And then the other. The, so, and the two theta now, it can be this error here. So, okay, because it could be something like that. And then he correlates with the center. And the, the detector tilt instead uh, is in this direction, okay? That actually is called phi in the other, in the integration. Yes. The last uh, two are rotation is this one, okay? So some detector, you have to calibrate also for rotation. In our case, we don't do because in our case, it doesn't matter, okay? But there are some cases in which uh, when the detector is over here, that you need to calibrate also for the rotation. So if it is not uh, perpendicular to the beam. And uh, the last one is eta. Eta means also for if your detector is out, if it goes in this direction, okay? Around the lower circle. Typically is the one you never, you just set, uh, but you don't refine, okay? Because uh, even with the standard, okay, you can always turn around the low. Okay, in our case, uh, eta zero, detector rotation zero, okay? We will only have to, two theta and detector tilt will be the two to work uh, and X and Y, okay? So let's uh, close. Now, in our case, it's not the Bragg Brentano. We select uh, a image 2D. In transmission here, we use uh, image 2D. Then uh, the measurement obviously is not a theta to theta, but it's only two theta, okay? Because our sample doesn't move eh? during the measurement. Okay, so there is no two theta movement coordinated with the theta movement with the two theta, okay? Uh, now, instead of here, well, we can select X-ray or uh, synchrotron, okay? Synchrotron has also the polarization, I think also the X-ray, but. And in the option here, we need to set up uh, the wavelength. Okay, so the wavelength here, is uh, this one, so it's 0 0.49594, okay? Okay, if you have uh, entered it, uh, okay, then here we have. What is the weight? Uh, well, if you have a uh, multiple wavelength, like a normal tube, uh, you have kappa alpha one, kappa alpha two, kappa alpha two is one half of kappa alpha one, so, you put uh, weight one for kappa alpha one and weight 0 0.5 for the kappa alpha two. Every magenta colored field is a, is a parameter you can refine. So you can also refine the ratio between uh, two kappa alpha line if you need, uh, okay? In our case, we have only one, we don't refine nothing, and is uh, what uh, we should know. Okay, so I close. Now the detector doesn't matter we leave a scintillator. The only case in which uh, you need to change the detector here is if, if you are working with uh, fluorescence, X-ray fluorescence, then you need to select uh, an uh, X-ray fluorescence detector, okay? Otherwise, I can tell you is only, but all the other, they do exactly the same. So <laughs> it was there from the beginning because maybe you need something different, but in the end, uh, we only the fluorescence need uh, has some uh, something <coughs> working inside the detector. Okay, last uh, we use uh, this Cagliotti instrument broadening.
okay? So we use the LAB6. We suppose the LAB6 has no sample broadening, and so we refine the broadening of the instrument. Here, okay, let's say in our case, uh, practically we have no asymmetry. Asymmetry is really so low that uh, we can ignore. So we, you can, uh, we can remove uh, both value, or uh, if we don't know, we just, uh, I select the second, I just remove one, and the first one I set to zero. When I put zero, it's not completely asymmetry, okay? Instrumental asymmetry, yeah. Now for the alpha eta dal maximum, here practically the we are uh, always at low angle so it's just the first value that count and actually the starting value here is not too bad okay so we can leave uh, start uh, with uh, what we have uh, by default here okay i put zero or you remove both parameter okay so No, in that case, uh, we have to refine, uh, okay, uh, in the instrument. Well, it depends on the instrument. Uh, the one, uh, the starting one you get by default uh, are uh, some uh, asymmetry for a normal Brentano instrument in the lab. They nearly work uh, well for that one. So you can start from, you can start, uh, yeah, you can start from that value. If it is not uh, Brentano, then uh, it, it depends, okay. Huh? Uh, it could be sometimes it's tricky, sometimes not. Uh, it depends on. For example, if you work with time of fly, typically in Los Alamos, we instead uh, select the Jesus that has a different uh, asymmetry type uh, that we define, but we import uh, the instrument parameter file from uh, in Jesus before that. Okay. So typically, or someone has done uh, the this one, or uh, the, there is a, also in the Daniel page uh, before, uh, there was uh, one instrument, uh, instrument broadening, and there is a PDF uh, I brought uh, with some uh, instruction how to work in that case for a uh, Brentano that was having asymmetry also. Okay, so explain how to work. Okay, today, Let's say what will take more time is actually the calibration more than the analysis after. Once you have uh, the your instrument calibrated, typically the analysis is faster if everything is okay. If you have some problem in the experiment, then it's another story. But uh, okay, so let's see here. We just uh, remove the asymmetry, okay, and uh, the rest is good. Okay, now we need to go, so neglect all the rest, uh, we don't need here. We go to, we need to import uh, our image and start to take uh, the image to transform into pattern, okay? So for, for uh, that, uh, so typically the browse is uh, when you load the pattern you have already into theta or in this space, okay? Uh, instead, if you have an image, you just uh, use from Im images here. When you press this one, in reality, mount run uh, image A. If you know image A, it's not the last version of image A because they change uh, a lot, so it's no more compatible with my plugin. I should uh, rewrite them, but uh, no time, so I'm still using version, I forgot, uh, two. Now it should be three, okay. So you cannot change, uh, so don't change the image inside, okay? Because it only works with this version, <laughs> mount. Okay, so let's, uh, an image if you have used it, recognize a lot of different images. Plus, uh, in the plugin here, we, I added uh, some uh, available plugin to load the additional image, uh, like, uh, yeah, all this. Now, if you use TIFF, uh, that is the best format uh, typically for image A here. So let's uh, open. You can open or you can drag your image over this small line here, if you know the. Let's open. So I have to go, yeah, there. And uh, I use the TIFF 16D 
LAB6 here. LAB6 uh, 25 kV 003. Okay, the 003 is important. I lost also, I did everything this morning, and then it was the 004 Z, Z3 that uh, I forgot completely was a uh, one uh, shot that, that was not good. <laughs> so I have to redo everything. Okay, so this is it. We don't see nothing. Well, because uh, image it doesn't automatically calibrate, yes. uh, calibrate, uh, enhance the, so you go to image, adjust brighten and contrast okay so if you go to adjust brighten contrast here and uh, let's say you can or drag the maximum or use auto here so sometimes you see like this one and then it goes around but it's not sufficient for for what i want so i use uh, the set button and i specify minimum and maximum so here if you put uh, zero one hundred Okay, is actually better because we see also the background. And I want to see. Luca, huh? I think you should stop a bit before to redo a few things the same way that we were. Okay, so let's. Uh, this uh, I have to finish. Then uh, I do again, okay? So now, what I want uh, is to see, you see, because uh, a MAR detector, typically, you get an image square, okay? But in reality, the mark is round, so here there is nothing. And you want to not uh, get uh, this part here. Also, mark detector, the, the really part uh, close to the border is, uh, is not good because there is also a steel uh, frame, okay? That it mask a bit uh, the intensity. So typically, you want to avoid the, the really the, the border here, okay? Stay a little bit inside. Okay, so what we do, and here in this one, we have the beam stop also, okay? So later, we will have to remove this one. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, there is a, yeah, we can do the really good one. We can remove also the beam stop uh, nice. in, uh, so, okay. So let's do everything. So first, I want to remove the bean stop so that the mouth doesn't integrate over the bean stop. You will only use uh, all the rest. So how to do that? Uh, well, you have to select uh, this uh, polygon selection. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it's the polygon. And then uh, I need to select uh, the area around the bean stop, okay? And then what I will do, all the area inside, uh, I set uh, to minus one. So the trick is, uh, well, you see the intensity here is zero. So all the intensity that are uh, below zero, MAUD uh, doesn't integrate over, okay? So if you have to remove some part inside. So in principle, we should go and, no, here we don't have, but on the duck, uh, we will have a diamond spot, uh, so we can remove them, okay? But it's uh, quite, or we simply ignore uh, and uh, because we fit all the rest, uh, so they count really not much. But let's remove, uh, so because you have two choice, or we remove the bean stop now, so mouth doesn't integrate over, or uh, there will be one or two pattern that uh, take, get uh, the bean stop and you just remove the pattern. Sometimes it's just quicker to do that. But I just let's show how to work uh, the other. So I start here. And so, well, here I can go straight. Uh, this one is very good. Uh, then I go up. Uh, I click uh, every time. So I just, uh, I can stay also a bit uh, larger. It's not mm -hmm. there. Then I come back uh, here. And uh, I have to close. Uh, did I close it? Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, if you don't have any more, he close it. Now that I have the area, I have to to uh, yeah. process, I have to remember every time I ah, is, uh, uh, there is one uh, you set, okay, uh, that I forgot. Oh, here, mat set. 
So yeah, I set the value and I just set minus one. You can set uh, minus 99, whatever. Is it, the important is below zero. So if it is below zero, all this area will become, uh, you see, black uh, here. But uh, now, okay, I modify the image, so mouth will not uh, integrate, so we'll only integrate all the rest, okay? Now, for the rest, uh, I can do another. Well, you can do the same here. I just, uh, you select uh, with the round uh, all the area you want to integrate, then you select the rest, okay, and set minus one because it was zero. If you use the Dectris detector, automatically the gap are set minus one. The deck is, I don't know, they, <laughs> is very, no, it is, uh, I use this trick because I saw that the deck is as minus one for uh, the non-measured zone. Pilatus. Yeah, so you just uh, hold the area and integrate because the segment, if you check with the images, the intensity there in the gap is minus one. So mouth will ignore them. Okay, so when a pattern will go through the segment, okay, you get a pattern that uh, is then is not uh, so there is a pattern, then another, so you get segment uh, of the pattern as it should be. Yeah, so okay, well, uh, Mauda has inside trying to recognize when the gap is larger typically than the step, uh, it becomes a gap, otherwise, uh, it should be a uh, Okay, so here, but uh, let's say here now we do, I take the oval here, I start from here and I select uh, the area I want to integrate uh, because remember I want to avoid the border, okay? So I stay a bit inside. You can also modify later, so like uh, here, I drag a bit, uh, top a bit up uh, or down, okay? So you see that you have a, uh, this point uh, here that you can uh, move uh, to go exactly where you want. Okay, now we have selected the area, okay? So we only integrate over this area. Still, you see is we are a little bit offset, okay? Mm -hmm. So you will see in two theta, the end up uh, will not be straight, uh, okay? Because some circle we get, uh, more as a circle, less, okay? Okay, after, now I can go to the last step here, plug in, mount plug in, okay? So here we do the caking, okay? That is, a, and so let's do with, uh, okay, if you, now, if you use the flat image transmission before, you integrate using normal transmission reflection image, in our case, we use, uh, remember, the inclined reflection. So it's this one, the flat uh, reflection image, okay? So they are slightly different, and but this one is the one that you can drag and drop after. Um, Multispreader from flat reflection image. Okay, I click. Now, I want to be sure here, there should be 350, right? He take uh, the data from uh, the previous one. 350. Now, in here, if you choose inclined refraction image with this one, he take the initial value from there. Okay, so if you set 350, you get 350 here. Uh, or, and if you modify here, he will uh, modify back uh, to the other. Okay, and then he remember also what you set here for the integration there. So the next image you just drag and drop uh, and will apply exactly the same stuff. Apart uh, the mask here, because the mask uh, is, uh, is something I haven't finished. In the future also, he recognizes also the mask, uh, etc. So, okay, so now, um, what uh, we do, okay, we want to integrate, uh, eta is the angle going around uh, every five degree, okay, is, is okay. And uh, he, here there is a check, uh, so you can choose the step, uh, 
generated for two theta. He said bigger than 0 0.01 because it means that the pixel size in this case correspond roughly to 0 0.01, okay? So you don't choose a step uh, smaller than the pixel size. I will not, uh, we don't need uh, 0 0.01, so 0 0.02 is quite good uh, for our little here. Okay, all the rest, uh, zero is okay. Now, what is the two theta test circle? Okay, if you know that at which uh, two theta angle one peak, uh, one reflection should uh, get, uh, okay, you set it here, and when you press apply, he will uh, show the circle. Now, our circle is not appearing because uh, we have uh, center X and Y zero, okay? So it's drawing the circle, but in the upper right corner, so we don't see it. Okay, so let's uh, set, uh, we have to guess the center initially. You don't need to get exactly the, the perfect center because uh, in MAUD, you refine the centering during the Ritver refinement, okay? And that is much better than whatever you do graphically, okay? So really is, uh, okay. Now, uh, I have here already some number for the center, so we don't need to search too much. So X, uh, if I put uh, 181.8 and Y, 163.2. Uh, is I lost? Two. Uh, probably could be refined even more, but I don't need uh, So apply now. Yeah, you see, I... It's not in pixels, then. It's hmm? not in pixels. Yeah, it's in yeah, yeah, it's in a millimeter. Yeah, you say millimeter. So, okay, one thing. When you load an image, you see there, check uh, you have uh, the distance, not only the pixel. If you have only the pixel, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, your image uh, doesn't contain the pixel size, dimension. So, but the, in uh, image A, where, uh, remember, we set uh, the... Well, uh, where we set uh, the um, bright and contrast, you go a little bit down, there is edit, you can uh, insert the pixel size if it was not stored in the image. If you use fit to d and you save with fit to d you lose the pixel size. I don't use fit to d for conversion because fit to d uh, and sometimes I never know what uh, he does uh, transformation. But for sure, he removed the pixel size, okay? So, so you have to be, okay. okay, if you don't know the pixel size, then you have to set the distance in pixel, <laughs> okay? Probably better to know, to, to get the pixel size, okay? So here, this one up here, so it's, uh, yeah, it's 34 uh, centimeter by 34 centimeter. It's called for the MAR. It's called MAR 345, zero for, this reason. Okay, so let's say if uh, the centering is sufficiently, probably I could move a little bit, uh, increase a bit uh, the X, right? But uh, I, I'm satisfied with that. So I press OK now. Remember, if you press Enter or OK, it starts the integration. So use the Apply button to check for the circle. You can also increase the circle for example, and test, uh, I don't know, the next two theta is at uh, 12, uh, yeah. Okay. So, but the uh, lab 6 is easy. If you get the eye pressure instead, uh, it's all oval. So it's not, uh, it's a bit tricky to, so typically I prefer to stay with the inner circle, okay? Okay, press, uh, now you start the integration and he asked me, uh, is saved in this ESG format, okay? That, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so let's, uh, I save in the same directory. Typically, to remember, I give the same name of the TIFF file. So this will be the LAB6 TIFF. Uh, oh, I lost the ESG, so I put ESG, okay? Or uh, call whatever you like, it's just uh, simply. but. Uh, Oh, I have already one because I have already done uh, before. Okay, so 
and then I close uh, image here because I finish. Don't save. I don't want to modify the original image. Okay. Okay. And then now I have the file. Do you want to? I repeat uh, again the. Two people have to be there. For yeah. Few people. Okay. Not more than nine people. From. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from where? From uh, image A. Uh, just from here. From image. Yeah. Well, I can remove. Uh, okay, you want to? You say, ah, I did. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit different. So, select all the file, uh, Control A, right? Well, you select one and Control A, or just you click uh, because otherwise the and uh, or uh, uh, or the command A in Mac, and then uh, you remove. Okay. It probably he asked you to confirm uh, the remover. Where uh, I specify the console visible, there is also an option if you want the confirmation di dialog or not, okay? So because some people prefer to, <laughs> because sometimes when you remove, uh, you cannot come back. So <laughs> uh, in my case, I, 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 okay, so I remove everything. No, if you have already done, uh, don't remove. Okay, so that's a, so I click uh, from image, right? Okay, so image A start, okay? So here is image A. And then uh, first uh, I load uh, my image, okay? So open, well actually it uh, could be open. And then I go for the LAB6 uh, TIFF16, okay? Open. Now the first, remember, we have to Image, we want to see the image, so I adjust uh, the brighter contrast, okay? And uh, here, instead of playing with this one, you see, oh, oh, it could be here, but I want to see the background, okay? So I, I typically go here and put uh, 100, okay? So I can see where really the image is. Okay, then you can close this one. <laughs> Typically, okay, I close, but I don't apply, because uh, apply in image A, modify a bit, uh, so you don't want to modify the intensity. It was only to, to view better, okay? So, okay. Now, uh, before I was talking about, uh, okay, if you don't have the pixel size, is inside properties, okay, here. And you see, you can uh, put the, you can define the unit of length. Actually, here the unit is centimeter. When you go to the mount plugin, automatically the mount plugin transformed into millimeter. I transform everything into millimeter to be uh, more safe. It's okay, but uh, other, or you can do it uh, here. So you see, the pixel size in centimeter is yeah, is 100 micron. The, the pixel size of the mark here, okay? So if you don't have it, uh, you set, uh, and then you will have uh, the coordinate here. Next here, I was... Uh, ah, it's inside there. Uh, properties. In centimeter, it's 0 0.01. 100 micro. It's in centimeter, yeah. Centimeter. Okay. Okay. Now, you want me to remove the bin stop? <laughs> no. <laughs> we okay. So, who has uh, removed the bin stop? The previous. Okay. So we will be good uh, because uh, you. Yeah. And uh, so we show instead uh, how to remove the pattern. So let's do without removing the. Okay. <coughs> so now I select the oval here. The oval, and uh, I start from uh, the up corner, and I drag, uh, so I click and drag uh, down, and uh, so I set uh, here. But then I refine a bit, uh, because I want to stay a bit uh, inside, okay? Here is inside, inside, uh, the bottom one, inside, okay? Okay, so I avoid the border, this is for the mark. Many detector, uh, also also some uh, CCD. The first uh, 
pixel. Sometimes it has uh, some problem with the voltage, etc. all the electrical properties. So not always the first uh, line of pixel is good, okay? It depends on the detector. Okay, so what I do now? Uh, oh yeah, once you have uh, selected this one, we go to plugin, mount plugin, and uh, uh, multispectrum flat reflection image. Okay, now he, in my case, uh, he will remember what I used last time. Okay, so that is also when you do once uh, after he remember, so he used the previous value you used. So, so that. Uh, Which? Uh, Which row in the plugin? This about. Uh, oh, yeah, it was uh, uh, flat. Uh, what was it? Flat reflection image. Yeah, I have to make uniform uh, in one and the other, so it's, uh, I will uh, modify a bit. This is only. Okay. Okay, so if I apply, I check, yeah, my circle is here. So, it's not, when you press apply, it doesn't show there? It's because the two teeth of the circle is what makes the... Yeah, yeah, they were set, uh, so he, uh, what you have uh, for the two teeth? Uh, you have to click apply to just uh, update when uh, when you press enter you will start uh, the integration <laughs> cancel just uh, dismiss the dialogue does nothing apply you update uh, based on the value and uh, okay or enter yeah So if you, if you set the center sufficiently good, and also if you have a, depend on the two th so if the detector is at a different two theta angle, it will be not a circle, will be probably, yeah, somewhere. Right, uh, it should, occur. so you will try to set uh, the initial value here until you get, uh, sometimes, for example, especially when you have the detector, I remember sometimes we put the detector manually on a table there so we don't know exactly the two theta all the parameter so then you collect uh, something with the line and then you play a bit with the value until you find out oh that is the two theta it is a bit uh, normally it's better to know the two theta and <laughs> at least uh, approximately a good approximation of it uh, etc in the case of uh, when we are normal, it's more easy because you put all zero and you only have to set uh, yeah, the distance and the X and Y. The X and Y here correspond typically if they put uh, correctly the detector, it should be exactly half of three, four, five millimeter, right? But in our case, uh, it's a little bit shifted, so it's not exactly in the center. Okay. So I press OK, ask again. Now I use the uh, same name, but uh, actually I put uh, so version B, ESG. OK. OK, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and I don't save. Then I close everything. When I have the ESG, and the ESG is automatically added here, okay? So, and you should uh, you start from zero here. So we should have a uh, uh, 72 pattern, okay? Because uh, we did every five degree going around, okay? So now, uh, at least one of them will have a low intensity because we'll have the bean stop, okay? So when I press okay here now, Okay, no, before to press OK, if you check now in the diffraction instrument, our inclined reflection image model here, in the integration setting, 
you you have uh, the value used okay so that is uh, how the program when you drag and drop now another image he will use uh, this setting here to do the integration okay so don't modify what is the integration setting if you want to use uh, the same these are not used in the calculation are only used if you drag and drop another image or uh, you want to automatically integrate uh, okay the but next one this is uh, in the 2d remember there was a uh, here the incline incline reflection option okay. the first tab is where you refine the second you see is not uh, refinable because it's only to store uh, the the value for the integration you use it uh, last time you load the image in image a and did the manually the integration okay so in principle you only do one image okay manually and all the other you can uh, then uh, just use uh, uh, the drag and drop okay so i close uh, my data set now and i get uh, okay this is the overall pattern so all summit if you want to see all of them is here Okay, you see here is the bean stop, actually. I can see here is dropping. If you want to check already which uh, pattern will be this one, and probably there are two of them. I just uh, zoom over here. So it's actually pattern 52 and 51 a bit. This one is a little bit lower. If I suspect uh, that is affected, I remove it, okay? That is why it's better probably to cut, uh, because in that case, you are sure. Otherwise, here, we just cut uh, two of them. Probably it was just, unluckily, was a bit uh, taking a bit of one or the other, okay? Control click uh, is to reset the thing. Now we have to set a lower limit. So I think here we set from six, okay? And now we can go up to 20, a little bit more than 26. Uh, well, uh, we set uh, 28, uh, so we get everything, okay? So I edit again my data set here. Where I set the limit is here. Computation range, so we go from six, uh, and if I want to get everything, I set, uh, oh, actually. Well, we will see. We It's better actually to reduce uh, because there is a let me see here in my right. No, actually, there is a LAB6 uh, develops some impurity inside, uh, some uh, uh, with uh, sulfur. Okay, so depending on how old uh, is your standard, you get some extra peak. There is one uh, is uh, at 27. So if we set uh, 26.5, uh, okay, we just avoid uh, that one. It's not a peak from LAB6, uh, so we can remove it, okay? Right, okay, so here is our. We still have to remove uh, what was uh, 52 and 50, okay? Okay, so I go to my data set, edit. I go again to my list of data file, and uh, then is 51 and 52, okay? Typically what I do, I select uh, the, from the 50 to 53. Okay, oh, shift click. Uh, so I only, so, and I just uh, view this four to see if I'm correctly, so I want to be sure. Okay, so you see this is going up, uh, up, uh, but these two are down. Oh, view the button there. If I select, uh, yeah, if you want to be sure, okay, if I select uh, this and 56, uh, okay, you can see better than, oh, yeah, these two are the two affected, you see? I, why select, uh, I should go from 41 to 55. You, okay, so you see, up, going up, uh, these two go down, where is the bin stop, and up again. Mm -hmm. So this will be the <coughs> third and four in my selection. So 51 and 52, okay? So 
I select the 51, 52. Now you can do, or you remove them. But if you want to, I, you don't know sometimes some of them, you are not sure if you have to remove or not. What you can do, you just disable them. You don't remove, simply will not be used. But if you change mind, you can re-enable them, okay? Okay, now if I click, you see no more is now okay. One thing here I start and I check is the background. Is the background uniform, especially going up? So because if it is uniform, here is uniform over here, here not too much, you see it's going a bit more down. So but let's say I will treat it as uniform, okay? So I only need uh, one background common for all the data files. This is quicker for the computation, okay, much more simple. Otherwise, if it is not uniform, you have to use a background uh, one for each data file, okay? That means a lot more parameter, okay? Here is not too, too bad, uh, okay? So let's say uh, again, let's finish with the data set. Okay, so for the background, I select, uh, edit again the data set, I go to the background, okay? Oh yeah, we have some region to exclude, but first I have to see which region to exclude, okay? Because we have some extra peaks we want to avoid. Okay, so let's see first uh, with the background. Okay, now we have a few choices. So, if you use uh, here, in this one, this is a common background for all. And you have a different kind of background. Actually, sometimes I just, uh, uh, when I have a non-uniform background, but I don't want to fit uh, many parameters, I just use the interpolated background here, and, uh, and it will go. Let's say in, in our case, uh, it will be very good. Okay, so if you want, uh, typically I don't use it uh, if I need to extract, uh, so, and actually we are going to extract, so, or at least not at the beginning. I can do it uh, later, I switch uh, to the interpolated one, okay? So, now, if you use uh, a normal polynomial background, five uh, here, five parameter is good, you don't go over that, uh, is difficult to fit. If you have a more complex background, then it's better to maybe use a Chebyshev polynomial. So you just uh, check here, our polynomial will become Chebyshev, okay? And Chebyshev, uh, oh, oh, not remove, I wanted to, we probably here can even go to 12, okay? Oh, I removed the first one, okay. So 12 will be from one, to, it doesn't matter the number after, okay? Just remove the zero. <laughs> oh, but uh, the zero was the one uh, with the different value here. Don't know, let's start, uh, I put the first uh, as 10, okay? Just uh, so I don't get the zero background, really. Okay, now, if you have also some bump, uh, and actually probably here we have the intensity going up, uh, you can also uh, use some background peak. So you can set up uh, a bumper, like a pseudo void function. And actually this one work not only in two theta, but may work also in uh, eta, for example. Well, it depends on uh, which uh, angle you are changing. In our case, we only change eta. So it means uh, you will say other one set up uh, some intensity that you refine the position in two theta, okay? And the alpha with alpha maximum and the Gaussianity. And then if you want it to change with eta, okay, you set up also here eta, the position, and the alpha eta that maximum for eta, okay? So then you can have uh, something like that. But in our case, let's, uh, we don't uh, we work without. Okay, the other is, if you want instead a different background for each uh, data file, the Typically, is in additional par, you have a background polynomial here. But you don't do 
for each data file because it will take forever to go through all the data file, add the, the parameter. And here also you have Chebyshev, okay? So what you do, you select in case all of them and you see you add the background parameter. So if I press five times, I add the five background parameter. Or you can remove the background parameter, okay? That is how you do, yeah? Chebyshev, actually, because the polynomial, polynomial is very simple. So you have a zero, right? So one parameter, two linear, okay? Three will be a, or a, something like that. Four, it goes like that. Five, it goes uh, with a bump in between and after. When you go over, it simply does more, uh, but you don't have flexibility to where to put the bump. Chebyshev instead uh, is more flexible to put the bump uh, and follow, uh, so it's much uh, more, uh, so if uh, you are really going up a lot uh, or uh, also Chebyshev struggle a bit, uh, but uh, they can uh, follow irregular bumping background. Yeah, that with the polynomial you never do. Okay. Because in polynomial is fixed where, uh, where the, the distance between the bump. What uh, is a uh, what version? Uh, I, I use 2.9993. Oh, it should be 992. Uh, I don't remember. It's more than a year for sure. Two years maybe the championship. But okay, unless I I don't remember exactly when I introduced them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have to go because it's nearly okay. Now, you see, we don't have a straight line, okay? Because uh, we don't have exactly the tilting, centering, okay? So that is why when we have a perfectly calibrated detector, this will become straight, okay? And then is our goal, get a straight line here. Okay, so let's go to phases now, and we load uh, our <coughs> LAB6. You can either you create a phase here, and you defined uh, with everything, but uh, everyone now is just loading from a CIF file, okay? So we can import here, or you drag and drop uh, a CIF file over here. Where's my... Do I have one here? Oh, I have too many. Let's clean up a bit, uh, so... Okay, I just drag and drop. So otherwise use uh, here, the first one is to import from a CIF. The second is you want to save to a, okay? So uh, LAB6 here, CIF, I just uh, over. Yeah, you can uh, load uh, some of them with multiple phases in it. There is only one, choose, okay? So the Lantanum exaborate. Edit, just to check. Okay, so when you have loaded, okay, I took the Lantanum from, again, from, uh, is, is inside the, the zip file we download from uh, Daniel's uh, website, okay? So after what we need to specify, okay, we have already the set parameter in it. That uh, should be the standard, so set, okay? Unless uh, you have a little bit different standard and then you put your cell parameter that you have uh, certified. So, but uh, the other thing is uh, our standard is supposed to have also no sample broadening. So very large uh, crystallized size, okay? And uh, no defect, uh, dislocation, etc. So how to do, how to specify that? Uh, because the default is uh, it takes some normal uh, is inside microstructure here. And uh, we use the line brother model, we use the Delft, okay? So just uh, use that one. But in our case, we want to cut everything. Uh, so yeah, one way is uh, you can uh, say none and have nothing. The other is uh, inside here, we use a isotropic model, not an isotropic, so it means uh, spherical uh, crystal size. 
inside the option, okay, here, the default typically uh, is 1,000 or 800, okay? So let's see for the lantanum here, exaborate, should be around uh, 7,000, okay? And here you can put uh, one uh, minus five. So this is nearly zero defects. I don't put zero simply because I, okay? Uh, okay, so this means uh, practically no broadening from the sample. All the broadening will be from the instrument and that we will refine the broadening of the instrument. Otherwise, when you have calibrated, you have the broadening of the instrument for your future, uh, future uh, for the other sample, the normal sample, you only refine this to value. You don't need to refine some uh, strange U, V, W value or whatever. You just refine a crystal size and microstrain, okay? And if it is anisotropic, so you have uh, some line are sharper, some broader, you select uh, the anisotropic model, the POPA. My advice is to use the POPA, and you refine the parameter for the POPA. It's much better, and also you'll find different for each phase. Uh, it doesn't have problem of convergency, et cetera, or uh, you stranger. Okay, so what else? Uh, now, you see our intensity is going up and down. It's, it's not textual in reality. Here is just statistical problem, because we have few grain. So we probably can start from the beginning Okay, or after, typically I do ones like this one, otherwise we can go directly. If you, and we use uh, typically here, if you want to fit everything using a labile fit, uh, like, uh, but you have a uh, multiple, okay, if you just need a labile fit uh, in Mauda, uh, here, instead of computing the intensity from uh, the atomic model, okay, you select here labile. So while well, you select the extracted and you use the bile, okay? There are also other, yeah, because we can do, but okay, here I don't, uh, <coughs> let's come back to the standard. I use a different one because I have a variation along eta also, okay? So it's not uh, simply one pattern, okay? So now to, for that one, I use arbitrary texture. This is not texture is arbitrary intensity, okay? So, so this will uh, use labile for each pattern independently and so you fit every. So if you use that one, you don't need to refine any intensity B factor because they don't play. Yeah, it's just uh, this one. So we select uh, arbitrary texture that is appropriate in this case because we have just, remember uh, in our case, we don't care about the intensity. We need only to, to refine our detector position. So get the straight line and the broadening. So, and ha so having the be best intensity will be good also for the broadening, okay? That's why we can, in this case, uh, we just use uh, the arbitrary text, okay? Uh, so now let's see what, uh, oh. We need to calculate once, right? Okay, so I press uh, the calculator here just to calculate the pattern initially. Well, initially he used uh, the, the, okay? So we are closer. Yeah, we have uh, one part to here in which we have uh, this impurity. One is here, okay? Here we get uh, like double peak, but it's because it's waving a bit. Uh, we don't have a perfect calibration. Okay, in case we have only to probably here remove uh, this uh, part, uh, okay? So let's say move. We don't uh, want to fit uh, that part, okay? Still, mouth will calculate it, but it's not counted in the weighted sumo square in the refinement, okay? So let's say from 15.5 to 16 something here. I think I put uh, here a note. 15.3, I prefer to get over a bit here. 15.3 to 16.2, okay? So where you exclude a region? So because you restrict the range, if you want to exclude the region inside, again, data 
find set. Edit, exclude the region here. So we add one. You can add uh, as many as you need. And now I put, uh, and this is uh, which data unit? Well, if you are working in two theta, it will be two theta. If you are working in this space, it will be this space. So it depends on the 60, no, what was it? 15. 15.3 and then 16.2. Okay. Okay. Now, if I calculate uh, now, the, the weight assumes changes. Uh, uh, how to know that uh, this part is not used? Okay, if you want to be sure. Okay, so uh, that plot uh, doesn't. Okay, uh, where you can see it, uh, you just take one of these uh, view, and you see where it's not calculated. Okay, so all this part uh, is excluded. So we get. Uh, one peak going up, uh, not the rest. <laughs> well, because I put, uh, yeah, with the 15.2. But uh, because there is also the, the tail of uh, this other. So you just uh, do as you like. We could also exclude also that one completely. OK, what else now? I think we are set. We just need uh, to refine, OK? so. In this case, okay, first uh, I will not refine the broadening, okay? I will start to refine, well, we have an arbitrary text, so we need, uh, so we don't refine any intensity. We only need to refine the background and the detector calibration, okay? So let's see, I prefer, uh, so MAUD has some uh, wizards or some uh, function to help you set up uh, the analysis and what to refine but not for the uh, instrument broadening for uh, calibration because every instrument is different, so I cannot uh, write uh, one that works for everything. So I go, what I do typically is I go to the parameter list here, okay? So, and here I can get a parameter list, so I expand all if I want to see all the parameter. These are refinable parameters. And now you have to scroll down. This is in CIF uh, uh, keyword, okay? So where I have to go? Well, I can use uh, some of this one. So first, I want to refine the background. So I free background. It will take care of uh, ref putting refinable all the background parameter that can be refined, okay? Not, uh, so here, for example, Oh, my chevy chef. Yeah, they should be. If you, sometimes it's better to scroll up and down to see. So you see, he said refinable all my chevy chef. Polynomial, okay. Yeah, the incident intensity, the overall intensity is not refinable, okay. And I will not refine because I'm using arbitrary tech. But I need to refine the distance specimen detector, right, the 350. Then I need to refine the center X and center Y error. This is an error respect to what we set, okay, in the integration. Then we refine two theta, that will be this tilt. And uh, phi DA, if you remember the one after, is the other tilting, okay? Okay, and not the, the last two, omega was uh, this one, and eta is the one around that we don't refine. Okay, what else now? Oh, here, if you have a, a polarization effect, but we are at zero, so we don't see any polarization effect, okay? You can uh, set uh, or refine the polarization ratio, etc. Synchrotron typically, you get, get even 99 here. Uh, wavelength, we don't refine the wavelength, okay? Now, here are our Cagliotti. Remember, this is the instrumental broadening. So let's say at the beginning, we don't refine them. Here's the trickiest one to refine, so we don't start refining this one. Or if you want to start refining, in case, only the first one, okay? First of the Cagliotti, not the other, and then you refine the other later, okay? Okay, all the rest are uh, we don't use any param additional parameter for the pattern. And let's go, the phase is at the end. 
We don't refine the cell parameter right here. Not the crystalline size, microstrain, nothing. Okay, so nothing to refine except uh, what we already set. So remember, just the background and the inside the detector, this X, Y, and uh, distance. Okay, close. I prefer to stay in this view because so I see if it is straight up uh, or not. Uh, in the other, we, you will see better the background instead. Okay, and then uh, I start uh, refining here. Probably before start refining, it's better to save uh, what we have uh, done up to now. So, because refining, if we forgot something, we got some problem, he diverges somewhere, okay? At least I can reload uh, and uh, correct uh, what I was doing before. Okay, so, to you save... Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah. This is uh, random. You depend ah. when you start. Uh, you can get uh, the. Typically, was the hammer, right, to work. So the refinement. But uh, some people say that uh, the refinement is like a plain a slot machine. Sometimes it works, <laughs> sometimes not. Uh, so so I put also a slot machine. Uh, <laughs> so if you are lucky. <laughs> Okay, so this is save us, or you choose from the menu, save analysis answer. So let's save, I put again in my, and I call it, uh, this is LAB6. Typically I use uh, start, uh, is the starting point. In fact, I have already, <laughs> I always use the same name. Okay, so now I can start uh, the refinement. Let's see if we get uh, straight mm. a bit. Uh, you see the extraction and the bail, how you reproduce the intensity is wonderful. So it just, uh, mm. the label method is very good. Okay, now uh, I get some Cholesky negative that these are the Chebyshev polynomial. Mm. The, the high value, they are not uh, easy to refine uh, because Maud used numerical derivative. So they get a very low value, and then it's not so easy to calculate the numerical derivative. Okay. Oh, one thing. You may see something different, probably, because I forgot. In the plot option, I am plotting background, su subtract background. Okay. Le let's see. The normal should be, this is calibration correction is for the intensity. Is, uh, for example, for time of flight, you prefer to plot typically calibration corrected. In our case, it doesn't matter. And we plot also as a square root. Uh, if I want to update, I just uh, go here. Oh, it's the same, nearly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. So in our case, the background is so low that it doesn't really matter. Sometimes, if you want to see some peak better, you plot uh, with the background subtraction. But be careful because if you forget, uh, sometimes you see some artifacts that are not artifacts is because you are plotting background subtracted, okay? Uh, so he subtracted the calculated background from, uh, from the before to plot. Yeah, if we check here, here we can appreciate the, uh, right. So we have some problem. We didn't refine the Cagliotti, so you see a typical shape like this one means uh, we don't have the correct uh, so now we have to refine that one also. So let's say parameter list again. I And uh, so I go down and uh, yeah, sometime if you want to search, uh, this will be Cagliotti, right? Okay, so you, you put uh, here and you get uh, all the Cagliotti, okay? But okay, I, I don't need to. So if you are, if you have multiple parameters, okay. Let's see. You want to refine all the Cagliotti parameter, Cal, oops, Cagliotti. And let's say you have a, a lot of them. Okay, or it may happen with some uh, uh, some parameter that you have uh, one per each or more for each uh, data file. So you end up uh, with a uh, hundred, and you want to set all refinable and there is not a button here for them. So you just uh, 
uh, put uh, some part of the name until you get uh, this one. Now, if I say over here, just in, in the tree here, uh, something that contain all of them, I just said uh, refine it, okay, and they all become refined, okay? That is the trick uh, to when you have multiple parameters and you have to set up, uh, so okay? Now, I want to refine the Cagliotti and uh, uh, I want to remove the oops here. Oh, why I cannot, uh, what is happening? Oh, you say <coughs> exception. Let's close, uh, reopen. I don't know what I did. Expand all. Yeah, this is why Maud is a ladybug, eh? <laughs> because uh, it probably here, yeah, I got an exception because I don't know what I did in interface. So there was an error happening, but at least it didn't crash, it didn't stop, uh, it just uh, <laughs> didn't do so. You close, uh, reopen, and, and it just continues, so, okay? So this is Java in reality, okay? So we don't refine the asymmetry, we refine the trigger, and maybe we refine the Gaussian value also, okay? Now, for the Gaussian value, probably is sufficient one. Well, let's uh, try to refine both, uh, okay? So we add uh, to the previous refinement, okay? So we still refine all the rest, uh, okay? And we continue. Okay, so let's uh, do some more. Uh, yeah, as I said, we will not be able to go up here for the background. That's uh, you, it's probably better because it's going up, uh, even the Choles the uh, Chebyshev are not able there. It typically, when it's going up, uh, I add uh, the peak function, or I use the interpolation. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Now we should have uh, everything calibrated. Okay, so we don't go more than uh, this one. Okay, it's sufficient for us. So let's uh, save. So first uh, I save. Now this I call uh, final. OK, because my detector now is calibrated, the instrument, and also the shape uh, is OK, etc. Well, there is always you can do a little bit more, introduce more parameters. Here, in reality, if you introduce a little bit of symmetry, it will work. But you have to be careful because it's a, uh, this kind of image, the asymmetry is due, is a MAR detector. So it's due to the penetration. So the asymmetry goes this way at the high angle. And uh, so it's a different asymmetry. To set up in MAUD, you have to use a negative value for the truncation. So it goes the other way around. Okay, but um, it, practically you don't uh, really see it. Okay, now, what next? I want to use uh, this instrument as a calibrator for the next analysis. So what I do typically is, first, uh, I fix all parameters, okay, before to save my instrument somewhere else. So because I was refining some parameter that I will not refine after, okay? So to avoid the problem, so I fix all parameter here, so nothing refining. Okay, closer. Now I go to the data set, edit, and where I have uh, the, my instrument here, I can store my, so what I do, I press store. Now I go to, okay, uh, when you run MAUD the first time, he created a MAUD. In the past, he was asking. Now I don't ask anymore because some people were choosing some places. Uh, they were running from the zip, uh, choosing the zip to save or uh, pressing cancel <laughs> there. It was a mess. And then, uh, okay, so now MAUD extract in one directory <laughs> and, and the user doesn't mess up uh, with, the <laughs> with that part. Okay, I'm sorry that uh, I don't, I take out uh, user possibility, but uh, I solve 99% uh, of the problem <laughs> that way. Okay, so now here, in fact, uh, under your document directory, I don't know what it is, it depends on Windows, uh, etc. 
So there will be mouth call, and inside that one uh, is here or in the example. I think in the example, oh, there is an instrument, and MDB stands for mouth database. In reality, is C format. So there are already some instruments saved uh, as an example, okay? So I will uh, just store here uh, other mine, okay? The one I define now. Okay, it's done. So, okay, here I finish with the calibration. Now let's go with the, our high pressure, okay? We should be in time to finish. Uh, all. Okay, so what I do now? I just can start uh, fresh uh, with the new analysis, okay? So I choose new analysis now in the data set. Uh, I edit, and now I just import my instrument, okay? So I import, let's go to my instrument MDB, open, and now, okay, you see, I have th already three. Yeah, every time I do, <laughs> I add one, but uh, it's the one with the underscore, so. Okay, the last one I did. Okay, I choose. Now, if I just check, yeah, you see inclined reflection image. That is the last value. Oh, we didn't check. So he was putting a two theta error, and with the two theta error, the X was moving quite a lot, two millimeter, right? But this is due because uh, the two theta, so the detector was a bit uh, tilted this way. And the TT in the other way is 0, 15 degree. So you see, not very big, but uh, you have to. So these two value, the tilt and the two theta, you don't refine. You refine with the standard, and you don't touch anymore. <coughs> but the x and y error, remember, that one may change due to this factor, the beam inside, or uh, the sample inside the beam, or the beam inside the sample that may cause a little bit different centering. Typically, is very close to data, but sometimes it moves a bit. But uh, that one is very easy. If you think we have pattern from all around, and when you move the center, some pattern move uh, okay. So it just uh, causes the, wave, the waviness. And it's different from a stress, okay? So it's not a problem. The tilting not. Remember, the tilting may correlate a lot with the stress. So that one you want to set up here. But the centering not. Okay? So that's why the center we can refine later. But the tilting you have to use the standard to 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 get it before. I saw sometimes people trying to get stress from this kind of detector. We are already at low angle, so the sensitivity is not too high, and not calibrating the detector for the tilting before. You should not do that because the, the error for the tilting, you get a higher stress for the tilting than from the real one you had in the sample, okay? So, okay, so is our sample, okay? Now, what we do for the data file, as I say now, we don't need to go through image A again, uh, but we just uh, uh, do, okay, where is my image? So now I need uh, the, uh, not the LAB6, is the MGFEO, the TIFF16. Now I just uh, drag over, or you can use uh, browse. If you have a set, select all of them and drag over. He will take a, will stay there. He create automatically ESG with the same name, uh, just changing TIFF16 to ESG and save. Uh, so you, the ESG in principle is not needed, but uh, if you remove them, you can re-add just the ESG. You can check inside, uh, is save the intensity, whatever. So it's just, okay, yep, done. Now this one uh, will be different, okay? Oh, now, because I start new, I don't have any more to set the limit. Okay, I have to set. Okay, so this is it. Okay. We have to remove uh, the bean stop part, uh, and we have uh, here is the gasket. So this part here we have not to use. So the only peak uh, coming from our MGFEO are one, two, three, four, and the fifth uh, is only 
part of it, okay? Because it, remember, it was an offset uh, D. Okay, so first, uh, let's uh, remove uh, all the part of the gasket. So we start here from uh, eight, I think. Let me see my guide. I will try to make it, I will put also a zip with all uh, and the short guy if you, now you know it's just for the value, or is the MGFO. Okay, oh, range 10.7, 22.5. No, we can go higher than 22.5. We go, we can go to 25, okay? The 22.5 is for another TIFF uh, I had. Okay, so edit here. 10.7 and uh, 25, yeah, about that. So let's see. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is black. Maybe we want to remove this part. 24.5? You guess. Okay, let's try. <laughs> yes, uh, well, we can either guess or uh, if you want really, you go to the other one here, use uh, the right mouse button here and you say show coordinate and you go here to see exactly so, right? So when you need. And if we have a phase and we compute uh, one pattern, we can check also, you see there is also show uh, peak info, so which HKL is closer to your mouse, etc. Okay. Okay, what we have to do now? Yeah, we have some impurity here, we don't care, and also, so let's see here what we need to remove. Okay. So we remove a pattern, this is, <laughs> we got uh, with the, so pattern uh, 52, right? Should we remove uh, only the 52? Uh, probably also this one a bit. Let's just remove the 52, okay? Here, pattern 52, disable. Probably also the 51 here, like uh, before. Okay, let's remove uh, both, uh, okay? Yeah, this means uh, we can see it's just cutted because we remove a uh, couple. And here is a diamond spot, okay? So you can, uh, or you want to remove this pattern, but uh, I can tell you it's just a spot over there. All the rest of the data, he will just, the retail will just ignore uh, that one, okay? And in case if it trouble you, you just remove it. Okay. Uh, now, let's uh, add uh, the face, okay? I just drag and drop the face also here. Uh, MGO CIF, okay. Magnesium Vustite, here. And uh, if we calculate, uh, just to see, okay, it's completely off. Why is off? Uh, because this one is at 40 gigapascal, okay? So it's compressed, and in fact, it goes to higher to the tango. So the first thing you want to do well, actually, in principle here, but let's say we would like to adjust the composition, okay? Because uh, what uh, we took from the CIF uh, was one uh, with uh, 75, uh, 25, the occupancy of uh, mag iron magnesium. In reality, our is 0, 0.901, 0, so, okay? So either you modify here, change, or in MAUD, uh, if you want to work uh, with occupancy and work with the uh, atom in the same side, uh, and especially then if you work with XRF, there is another way to work with. Uh, well, typically in the C file, uh, the specification is that uh, you, you need a new site for each uh, occupant, but in MAUD, uh, you don't need. Uh, so I just removed the iron from there, and the in MG, site uh, that uh, has the same coordinate here, I just add uh, here. So you can add uh, more atom here. So I add uh, not calcium, let's change uh, I iron here, 
And actually, typically, do you use uh, uh, cation anions or not? Uh, no oxidation. Well, my advice is you either use for all of them uh, cation anion or you use a neutral. You choose uh, one of the two. For neutron, you always use neutral, right? Because they only see the nucleus, not the, not the electron, yeah. In, in the case of uh, uh, X-ray, it doesn't really change a lot. Typically, you don't see any difference because it's only one or two electrons. And it means also if the electron is going to be shared between the two or is it uh, more, uh, so more anionic or ionic compound or more covalent, okay? If it is ionic compound, uh, you may prefer uh, this one. To set, uh, okay, so here you choose the oxidation state. Uh, so we have uh, the scattering factor for the yeah, if you see for oxygen, there was O minus two, so let's use uh, just uh, the oxidation. Now let's go here. Um, let's choose also another trick you do in Mauda. So automatically, okay, how it works here? Total occupancy is the occupancy of the site. Here is instead the partial occupancy. So is the re relative occupancy between atom occupying, so. Here I assume that uh, the entire is full occupied, the site, but there are, uh, like here for example, is 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and Maud keep always, uh, if you refine one of the two, he will always normalize the sum to one here. But uh, if you have only two, I prefer to help uh, the program, and I specify that uh, the occupancy of the iron should be always one minus the occupancy of the magnesium. It's only a three. Uh, it's needed if you want to refine the occupancy of the magnesium. We will not do it, okay? So in our case, it doesn't matter, okay? But uh, just to show if you need to do it. So how to do it, okay? So I go to the iron. Well, you choose which one you want to bound to the other, okay? And you specify a linear relationship between the two. What will be the linear relation? One minus the occupancy of the other. Let's see how to. So I go here, right mouse button, and I choose equal to. Okay. Now I have to to go to the parameter for the magnesium partial occupancy. So I have to scroll to the end. What is the magnesium? Here it is. So you see there is a total occupancy for the site. And then there is the occupancy, partial occupancy for the, for the relative occupancy. So I bound that to the atom site occupancy of the magnesium, and the linear relationship will be one minus the other, right? It's times minus one per this one. It's written a bit, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to get used to, yeah, you have to specify to the, to the <laughs> the program, a formula, so that's not uh, how we normally think, okay? Set bound, when I press set bound, is set, okay? And typically, you want to test, uh, does it work? So let's uh, modify the magnesium occupancy here and put uh, what it should be, 0, 09. Now I go to iron, 0, 01, so it's working, okay? My advice is test it after, because sometimes you choose a wrong one and then you do. You can also bound, uh, for example, the occupancy to a cell parameter, if you know the relationship between the occupancy. And then, uh, you, instead of refining the, the cell parameter, you refine the occupancy, and the cell parameter will change. Uh, and so it will be more precise because it's set on the cell parameter, okay? Something, so you, okay. What else? Uh, so in this case, we don't use a uh, uh, labile fit or uh, whatever, okay? We need to set. Okay, no, let's uh, do one step at a time, okay? So here, still, uh, yeah, you see the computation doesn't change, okay? Now, this line should be here and this one there. So what you do first uh, if you are working with high pressure? So I want to use the equation of state to see what pressure I have, okay? So first, I let's uh, find out uh, which cell parameter 
around is this one. So, and also this can be used uh, if other time you have to change the cell parameter because the starting point is not very good. You never start in a condition like this one because what uh, the Ritwell does here, it will kill down your peaks, right? It doesn't see, oh, I have to move yeah, there. Yeah. It doesn't see as us. It just uh, minimize the difference in intensity. So this means, so always if you have to start, uh, your peaks should be under the peaks. Yeah. Otherwise they will be crashed down to zero, okay? So let's move them uh, there, okay? So what uh, you could do in MAUD, see below here, Oh, sometimes you have to refresh this one because sometimes you add uh, some model and it doesn't refresh, I don't know. The past was always refreshing, now Java has took uh, some. If you need to refresh it, the way to do it, uh, open the parameter list, closer and it's refresh also if you want to be sure because the two are uh, linked so okay so let's go down but the other is always refresh it when you open okay so i need to oh i don't need the las oh maybe i close the the data file set i need only to the phase okay here is the cell parameter here okay in the cell parameter if you press just after the value here, you get this one. If you don't get the second here, it's because you have to, okay, enlarge a bit uh, this one, okay? So I just click there, just to avoid to press uh, this button here. So the arrow is to decrease the value, increase the value. And here we set the step, actually. We, so let's put the step like uh, 0 0.05, quite large, but we, are, we have to move it uh, a lot. Now I, I need to decrease the cell parameter because it's pressure, so let's go down. You see, it's moving. Uh, let's, uh, now I don't want to move uh, too much, so I decrease the step. I need to get uh, its wave, so I have to be, okay. Oh, 397, yeah, 398 or 397, maybe 397. Okay, so this is actually my cell value at high pressure. What is the equation of state? Well, if you, do I have uh, still open? Uh, oh yeah, it's open. Um, this is, for example, one of these article, okay? Oh, I have to, uh, man. Okay, yeah. And here, for example, is for MGO. Oh, no, it's for our MGO. Huh? And if you go down, here is the equation of state. Huh? Let's enlarge a bit. Okay. So our set parameter, oh, we need the volume. Right, I forgot. Uh, yeah, in the output window, we get the volume. But let's calculate. What was it? 397, right? It's a cubic, so. 3.97, uh, oh, there was the X, 62.57. So what is 62 here, mm -hmm. point 57, so nearly alpha. So we are uh, a bit uh, over 40 gigapascal, okay? So, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, so, well, sometimes they don't really know the pressure. They put a calibrant inside that is uh, like a MGO. If you have this curve, uh, you can use as calibrant, okay? So from the set parameter, you get uh, the pressure. Okay, uh, so, so it just, uh, because we will use uh, now a stress model and we need the elastic constant. And the elastic constant also you can see here Yeah, how they change with the pressure. So at 40, we are here. Actually, we are close to the drop. So in fact, uh, this causes a problem. We have a drop of one, of a couple here. Also the velocity drop there, and then the, there's no transition. Is They don't know why it's happening, but uh, it's happening. Okay, 
So, okay, we are around 40, so here you see especially the C11 change a lot. Uh, okay, so actually I have the value for uh, the pressure. So this is what, uh, so you need to know the crystal, if you want to, well, use uh, the stress uh, and model exactly the, you need uh, the elasticity. Okay, so actually here I have my value. So what we do now, okay? Let's, uh, okay, so here, first, we have to, it will, we have to broaden the line, and this will be just crystalline microstrain. They will be large. Let's, uh, we will fit them, so we don't care at the moment. We have texture, so you see it's going up and down, and uh, we have this waviness. Why the waviness is because we pressure in one case, uh, but in the other, the gasket uh, uh, doesn't apply the same pressure, so we get a deviatoric part, okay? And typically, this is easy to model because uh, if you have a pressure 100 here, it will be 50 reverse sign in the other two, okay? So it's just alpha, one alpha, minus one alpha, the other. So what we will do, we will uh, use, again, equal to, so use only the stress in one direction, and we set the other two equal to minus one alpha, okay? So then we just only fit. Uh, this is, will be the deviatoric part. The hydrostatic part, how we fit? Just by the cell parameter, okay? So the cell parameter can be, can just fit uh, the hydrostatic part, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's very simple for the stress, uh, and, uh, but to be a little bit more, uh, because we have uh, anisotropy here, we prefer to use the single crystal elastic uh, constant and uh, use the texture to calculate the macros, the anisotropy of the, stra the, st uh, of the strain uh, due to the different elastic constant in the different direction, okay? And we have uh, to use uh, one texture model. The idea is uh, for the texture model, we can also test uh, more than one, okay? So let's uh, set, uh, because then the refinement is very quick. Uh, so where we set uh, the texture and stress, uh, we go to advanced model for the phase. And here we can uh, uh, use uh, whatever. Actually, even work well, also MTEX work uh, well in this case. We have uh, not a complete coverage, okay? Instead, uh, the harmonic doesn't work uh, very well here because the coverage is too small for harmonic, yeah? So let's choose uh, EVINF first. And the option, what we choose in EVINF, we don't uh, use any symmetry for the sample, but uh, set size, okay, this is the larger possible. Uh, let's say here, it's not a very sharp texture. We can use 10 or 7.5. We did uh, the sampling every five degree, so it's important just to use five or more, not less than five, because we were using every five degree in ETA. MTEX is more easy. I, it, it works with whatever resolution you have in, okay? So let's say here, I don't remember. Let's choose a 10 first, uh, so to be safe, because the coverage is low, so I don't want many cell, okay, for the ODF. So choosing a large cell size is helping here. Okay, for the strain now, you can, well, this is the model of uh, Sebastian Merkel, in which uh, practically you fit uh, an elastic constant for each peak, okay? We don't want to use uh, that one. Uh, let's try the moment process that includes uh, several different models. So from Voigt to Royce, but uh, we go to the backpack Geo, it's called, is the, let's say the, the one that is more, is actually uh, give the same result as a self-consistent, okay? So it's very good, uh, but uh, the calculation is much, much quicker, okay? And it's exact uh, calculation. Okay, and, uh, but at uh, the beginning, if you want to go faster, we don't use the ODF uh, to calculate. Uh, so first iteration you do without the ODF, and then you enable the use of the ODF uh, only when you already are uh, close to the, because it's low, well, it depends on which 
texture method you are using, but it can slow down quite a lot, okay? So you want to use only at the end. Now we have to set uh, the single crystal, the stiffness matrix here. I have the value. So at uh, for the 40 gigapascal, a bit. Uh, so the C11 is uh, 500, yeah, that value there, you see? So I just, here C22 and C33 is the same. Now C12 is this one, so we'll be here. And then C4476, okay, that, uh, The one uh, you get by default there are for copper, so <laughs> you, you want to change them. Okay, this is the macro stress. So now, okay, there is one uh, complication you have to, okay. So you have to understand the MAUD coordinate system as it is defined. There is a recent paper on quartz also that uh, work a little bit more on how it's working, so with some figure. Uh, typically, you think a Brack Brentano, okay? Now, here is Z, X is along the beam, going toward the detector, and Y is the third one, so it means uh, Y is here, okay? So in our case, uh, we are, uh, okay, here, okay? So, but uh, the beam is going like this one, so still, and our sample, so still, X is here, Y, uh, no, uh, sorry, Z, X, and Y, okay? So now, in our case, the pressure was uh, this way, so it will be along Y. I prefer to have it, uh, so it will be along uh, 2, 2, then, uh, because, okay, for the stress, where is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, then it's uh, a bit, uh, so 3, 3 is this direction, Mm -hmm. And uh, I always get uh, this one wrong, uh, one, one, and two, two. So what I do typically, okay, here, I change the sample coordinate system to make it uh, like this one. So I get uh, Z, uh, <laughs> so the pressure along Z. So I don't make any mistake uh, typically for one, one, two, two. Okay, so, how, so I show how to do it. Uh, you want to put uh, the uh, Z along uh, uh, along the pressure axis. So pressure axis is here, change the coordinate system, so pressure will be here, okay, in Z, okay? So then it will be 3-3, three, three, okay? So this will be our uh, compression axis where we have the deviation. Typically it will be around uh, one gigapascal, okay? Oh, what coordinate here? You choose the coordinate. If you choose, if you use uh, Gigapascal here will be gigapascal here, okay? Megapascal, megapascal, PSI, whatever, okay? The same, just use the same coordinate system. Okay, so macro stress and this one will be, well, I can put a refinable already here. And the one, one, two, two, remember, we want them to be one half of the other. So I use again equal to, uh, I close the data set here, so I go directly here. Okay, so here are stiffness and uh, here, equal to 3,3. Three. Now you know times minus 0 0,5, okay? Set bound, uh, closer. I do the same for 2,2. Uh, two. Mm -hmm. uh, the stress, micro stress 3,3. Three. Minus 0.5. Okay, set bound, close. Again, you want to verify here, we have to close, reopen, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, okay? And this is negative, the other positive. Negative is compression, positive uh, tension. Okay, so this is set, uh, even set, uh, so in principle we have uh, everything, okay? Oh, yeah, you want to verify uh, that uh, we put, uh, oh, now, I didn't change the sample reference system. So I go to sample here, edit, and actually this tilt here is sky, okay? 
So I go to sample position and then I have to put chi 90. Okay, so I turn 90 chi. So this is this one is just uh, for if you realize your sample you put uh, is not uh, exactly as you want or you want to change uh, how you see the pole figure etc. You change here and uh, no, Omega, okay, so if, if this sample is here, detector, right? Omega is this angle, chi and phi is one. So if you are uh, moving omega here, now chi is here, and phi is over chi, so it will be here, okay? If, when you are at zero, zero omega is like uh, this one, chi is here and phi here, okay? So, like a typical goniometer. So you have uh, the omega, that is theta also, sometimes, okay? And then the Eulerian cradle with the chi and phi. Okay, and they start the zero is uh, where is defined. Uh, okay, let's, uh, I calculate. So the wave uh, you see is going inside, upper, so like exactly like this one, okay? So, uh, probably is, yeah, it's more than one here, okay? The deviatoric part. Okay, so we are, uh, yeah, probably. You can also use uh, here same uh, method. If you want to get closer, so here, let's see. We go to the macro stress 3.3. Three. We change by, oh, by zero 0.1 and we decrease. You see, we are increasing the waviness, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can get an idea of uh, how much uh, we be. Okay, what we define here? Oh, what about the background? Mm -hmm. Well, we use as before, okay? Or we use a polynomial. I didn't check. Oh, it's very. Let's see. Let's just try directly the remover, the interpolated one, okay? So we, I remove any background parameter, go to interpolated, interpolated background here. So I, I specify, let's say every 20 point, uh, I want one interpolation point, and then he does some iteration to optimize where to put the point. The interpolation is done on the residual, okay? So you have not to worry if one point is uh, over a peak because it's done on the residual. As uh, the program, if the program fit the peak, okay, the background will not uh, interpolate the peak, okay? Typically I put a little bit less, so six iteration, okay, here. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's uh, see exactly what we are refining, expand all. We want to refine uh, the scale parameter now. Oh, the background, we have the interpolation, so no parameter here. We don't, okay, we want to refine again the center X and Y, remember, is but not the distance. And then we need to refine the cell parameter. Crystallized size and micro strain, so I if you just select the model and set the refined, it, it just set uh, all of them. What here we wanted to refine, remember the, is already set to refine. And maybe the B factor, okay? B factor, to just fit one B factor, you use bound B factor, so you bound all the B factor together and just use uh, refined one, uh, so the first for the magnesium. Okay, let's see. We refine the intensity, the background, right? Mm -hmm. Set parameter, the stress also for the position, crystal size and micro strain from the broadening, and the stress for, uh, yeah, so, and the texture for, uh, okay, we should be good. Let's save one just to be. Do we have a. Uh, let's put that. Uh, let's put it. Uh, okay, let's see. It's a bit typically 
you start uh, not uh, directly there, but let's try this. Okay, he's going there. Yeah, the interpolation for the background, you see how he get uh, the background from the beginning, quite good. Okay, the texture is already good and also stress, yeah. Oh, we finished, right? I don't know, it was still going down, not much, okay? From four to five, yeah, you see the weighted sumo square was uh, just, just a little bit. So, okay, so we can check uh, what we have uh, here. I check uh, here, right. So 1.2, okay, so the stuff uh, here. Oh, but we didn't use the texture, okay. We have to use the texture because, uh, and uh, okay, so let's uh, now do some more iteration using the texture for the macroscopic elastic tensor. Oh, is a convergency, okay. Did it change? Uh, let's see if uh, 1.29, okay, so it passed from 1.2 to 1.3 practically, okay. Just say, uh, yeah, that's uh, with a more correct model. Now, let's see, let's try to use MTEX instead. So what I do, go here and use MTEX, okay. Now, option. ODF resolution, 7.5 is fine. Even if I change uh, it, this value work uh, very well for, uh, okay? You can choose also, yeah, the kernel type, but uh, uh, they both work uh, for Mises or uh, the Lavalier percent, percent, okay? The only parameter normally I, I change uh, are here. If I want to exclude uh, some uh, peaks uh, because they are very small. Okay, even if you don't need to exclude any peaks uh, because you weight uh, the pole figure by the intensity of the peak. In uh, MTEX also you can do now with the new version, but uh, in MAUD we are still using an old version of MTEX, okay? So that doesn't have uh, this feature. So what you do, all pole figure, count the same. But if one pole figure is coming from the small peak, uh, not very reliable, you, you, and also, if you work with the monoclinic, you have a uh, hundred of them, so you just saw what you do, you put, uh, for example, here, if you put 0 0.05, the peak uh, lower than 5% than the highest will not be used for the ODF uh, calculation, okay? They are used in there, but not, uh, Okay, so it's just to exclude uh, some of the, let's see here, uh, I leave, uh, I don't exclude nothing, I have, I want to use all four, okay? So, well, I could put zero, okay? To be sure, it uh, doesn't exclude any, any uh, reflection here. And also, the other is uh, typically, when you go to very low D, they are overlapped a lot, so if you want to exclude that part, uh, you put a uh, minimum D. So. The one that have a lower D also will not be used for the, so will not be passed to MTEX for the ODF calculation. This is only which one are passed, okay? So use them when you have a lot of them and you want to restrict uh, to only the more reliable, okay? This is for MTEX, okay? In our case uh, here, we don't need that, so let's go with the MTEX. So now, oh, let's uh, scroll down here. You can see here when you call uh, MTEX, but okay, it's, it's just running. So it ran uh, the MTEX execu executable. I never tested in Windows the, the MTEX uh, execu executable, so I know they work uh, in uh, Mac or Linux in case uh, I have to do it, but uh, didn't have the time to. Okay, so you see also MTEX. Now, you want to check uh, the uh, pole figure. So the, uh, here. Oh, why it didn't show the pole figure from MTEX? 
I disable the option. Oh, maybe I disable. It, it should show uh, show a plot uh, with the experimental uh, extracted, etc. But okay, we can plot here. So I see we plot the one 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 two or two two zero, or you can plot uh, the inverse plot figure. But uh, let's plot here. Okay, so these are uh, from MTEX. And uh, if I plot uh, the experimental intensity, so you see we are covering only this part of the, uh, the pole figure, okay? Yeah. In fact, uh, so, as I said, the coverage is not uh, really very large, okay? But uh, sufficient to get, uh, this is the correct uh, pole figure. In, even if I get uh, nearly the same, more smooth uh, with MTEX, okay? And uh, the harmonic, uh, it doesn't, only if you assume fiber symmetry, then uh, you restrict the number of coefficients and then you can get that. Okay, that is how you basically work uh, with the... Okay, so now, oh, the tensor. Okay, if you want to do some uh, special, oh, forgot, I, I close uh, in that uh, texture plot uh, here in the menu here. Let's say you want to use the ODF uh, to calculate some other velocity or whatever tensor. You just, uh, and actually, yeah, plot, uh, oh no, no, plot, right, yeah, where it was. Oh, homogenized tensor property, ah. So here, you choose, uh, you want a tensor rank two, rank four. I didn't put a rank three and rank, well, rank one, you don't, uh, uh, rank three is missing, yeah, but uh, okay, so you select, and uh, what you do, you, you just press homogenize. You can choose the method here. You want to use uh, Hill, Voigt, Ross, or Geo, okay? And we'll use the ODF. Uh, you can also load uh, an ODF, uh, so from uh, another one, yeah, okay? Because this one work uh, by himself. Fit tensor, okay, uh, so if you measure the property, okay, and you have the ODF, you measure the property in different direction, uh, you can try, you, you have to load uh, one file, in format in which you specify direction and value of the property, and you can fit uh, this tensor here. I use only once, I think. But okay, that's uh, how, if you want to use it. Uh, that was what uh, you wanted? Okay, yeah. When, when we are measuring in situ, we gather a lot of data for the current level of stress. So I will have many pictures. Okay. A lot of results. How, how can I get the results? So, okay, well, with, in this case, uh, yeah, you have to learn MIC. Milk, milk uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, Dan didn't come, yeah. no? Uh, we were, okay, milk, uh, Dan Savage from Los Alamos, mm -hmm. uh, he wrote that uh, this uh, milk is a MAUD interface, interface language kit, is what they use in Los Alamos to automatically run, they run uh, 4,000 uh, mm -hmm. experiment <laughs> in, uh, Read the refinement with texture, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So is uh, he has automatic the automatization for all this stuff because there is also the batch, but in your case probably because maybe you want to, if you want to refine something incremental, yeah, you have to use milk. No, you can do also with the batch, but it's much better with milk. And is there any recommendation? Yeah, yeah, it's available also, it's on GitHub also, and uh, more documentation than for Mount. And for, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's in Python? Yeah, yeah it's in Python. Okay. Now Dan uh, is working to modify it uh, because uh, he found a package to call directly the Java. So mm -hmm. he, he transformed uh, all my Java object into Python object, so it will be more flexible. How also is it? Can you spell it? Milk? Yeah. 
Mauda Interface Language Kit. Yeah, if you search MIC, probably you find the, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, there is a, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that one is really, so in Los Alamos, they, they use uh, that one. And and uh, he use also for uh, images, he can use also the pony. Pony. Yeah, yeah. for uh, loading them. Well, let's see, uh, I'm using PyPy and Yeah, some also, people. right. Calibrating with that, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And in case you can ask uh, Dan uh, if you have some problem, yeah. Because probably he's setting up uh, everything at the beginning and then, uh, again. yeah. Right. Because, yeah, there is this uh, batch uh, in which you specify and c you can put it uh, to work incremental, but uh, is the what you can do is limited. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, expanded uh, that concept into something much more useful. Okay. I think that we have to close the building. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't show. If you want to try, there are also the other no. texture model, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, just the same. You change the model, you set up whatever, yeah, and, and you go. Oh, I have to finish the record.